important budget because, as you've rightly indicated, it's probably the last one before we get a general election in this country. Uh, and the Chancellor hasn't got that much fiscal headroom to manoeuvre. But what we would like to see in the City of London is measures which stimulate economic growth. Whoever wins the next general election, the only way forward is to get growth in an economy that, frankly, has been stagnant for the past 15, 16 years. One of the ways we can do that is to ensure that high-growth British businesses that are start-ups here don't only scale up here, but they stay here. And so we introduced last year some mansion house reforms around defined contribution pensions, where we are trying to build a fund of 5% of, of, of contributions into a fund, of ultimately a £50 billion fund, to stimulate uh, growth in high-growth British businesses and non-listed equities. We'd like to hear more about that from the Chancellor, for example. There's a lot of focus on personal tax cuts. There's less focus on uh, these sort of measures for the business community, really. You were just highlighting there what you would like to hear, but any sort of indication that that's the direction that the Chancellor will actually take, or do you think he'll disappoint the business community today? No, I, I don't think he'll disappoint the business community at all. I think he realises that to carry the business community with him is important because it's part of the economic stimulus of the country. Uh, and I hope he will recognise that. He's already indicated that, for example, on the pensions issue, that he is going to insist that pension funds declare how much they're investing in the United Kingdom. And we in the city very much welcome that. The bottom line is we need more investment in the United Kingdom. We need more foreign direct investment coming into the United Kingdom, something which was in last year's autumn statement as well. So I think we are, we are optimistic that the Chancellor will deliver today. And looking specifically at these potential personal tax cuts, you know, looking at the economic picture, technically we are in a recession. Do you think that the business community, the corporates, are actually worried about how far the Chancellor will go when it comes to personal tax cuts? Well, the Chancellor has made very clear that uh, tax cuts, if indeed there are any, will be fiscally responsible. In other words, they will be affordable long-term for the nation. And that's very important, that it should be long-term and not, not short-term. So I think that we can hope that we will get... Uh, you know, we're to a high-tax economy at the moment. Chancellor has said that. We need to bring taxation down uh, to, so that more people can keep more of their earnings in, the, in their pockets. But what we mustn't do, and what I hope the Chancellor won't do, is to create tax cuts which actually drive inflation back up. We're getting inflation under control now, so tax cuts need to be a stimulus but not ones that will be inflationary. I would also like to look at some of the comments from the Labour Party, obviously because we're expecting a general election. Very recently they decided to ditch their plan of having 28 billion investments. Now, the key here though is was this a mistake because you would have driven some of that investment that you're actually asking for? Well, look, I mean, uh, this is obviously in relation to the net zero investment, and net zero is fundamental. The most important thing we have to do is to save, save the climate and save the planet. Um, and I'm sure that probably in retrospect, maybe Labour uh, regret committing themselves at that early stage to that £28 billion figure, because, of course, being an opposition party, they don't know exactly what they're going to inherit. But what I would call for today is absolute clarity from the political parties around what their net zero aspirations are. So this applies to both parties equally. They need to be very clear because if they want private sector businesses to invest in net zero, we must have continuity and clarity of policy in that area. And that's something I don't think we've had entirely uh, from either party at the moment. And we need to see that as we go into the general election. Looking at the next government, how much fiscal headroom will there be for whoever takes uh, number 11 next, given that we know the economic picture is challenging? What are you expecting for the next government when it comes to that? Are we looking at more challenging times here in the United Kingdom? Well, look, it's a, it's a very difficult situation for whoever forms the next United Kingdom government because we know there is very little uh, in the way of public coffers at the present time. Uh, and that is why my call for economic growth is so important because if we get economic growth, we create new jobs, new businesses, new tax receipts, which ultimately will be able to fuel uh, public expenditure plans. But at the moment, you know, with COVID and, and the geopolitical situation which we face, we know that the coffers are pretty bare, so it's not going to be an easy time.